But we each need to find our own inspiration, Kiki. Sometimes it's not easy. I guess I never gave much thought to why I wanted to do this. I got so caught up in all the training and stuff. Maybe I have to find my own inspiration. As you can probably guess, that clip is from Hayao Miyazaki's 1989 masterpiece, Kiki's Delivery Service, and that clip perfectly sums up what I love about this film to death. This clip is why I still revisit this movie almost every year when it gets re-released in theaters for Ghibli Fest, why I still have the same amount of love for it ever since my mom played me the film on VHS when I was four or five years old, why I still get excited to see the movie even though I've seen it hundreds and hundreds of times. That clip really speaks to me, not just as a content creator, not just as someone who hopes to become a professional writer, one day, but just as a person, as an average guy trying to get through the bullshit that is known as life. When I look at a lot of video essays that have examined and analyzed this film, they specifically focus on what the film has to say about art, like writer's block, or the struggles of being an artist, or the fear of potentially falling out of your passion by making your passion your job. Don't get me wrong, these are very much central and important themes that Miyazaki explores in Kiki's Delivery Service, and I very much value these themes as much as the next person. However, I think even if you aren't an artist and don't plan on finding a career within the arts, there is still so much that you can get out of this film. It doesn't matter if you want to be an engineer or a firefighter or a meth dealer or whatever. Regardless of what you want out of life, you have some idea of what path you'll have to take because you don't see yourself being anything other than what you imagine yourself being in your dreams. Even if you were lost in life, you at least have some idea or even a fantasy of what you want to do in the future. We all get wrapped up in chasing our dreams, our desires to be the thing that we want to be, and what we're always told is to go after your dream no matter what because doing so, you'll eventually gain true happiness. But I think what we're not told enough are the hardships that come with chasing your dream. We're told to chase our dreams, but we don't know what to do when our dream suddenly makes us so exhausted that we dread doing it again the next day. We're told to follow our passions, but we don't know what to do when we fall out of the very thing that got you out of bed in the morning in the first place, that gave you that sense of purpose. These are things that everyone either has or will go through at some point in their lives, regardless of whatever it is you do. But I think the worst thing on top of this shit Sunday is the negative thoughts we have because because of these moments. Will I ever fall back in love with my passion? Was I ever good at what I did to begin with? What's the point of all this? What can I do if I can't even fulfill my very purpose? These are ugly questions that we keep asking ourselves and we become emotionally wrecked because of them. The path we've been walking suddenly disappears and we have no idea where to go next, causing this downward spiral that makes us sadder and sadder. Depression is something that a lot of people face, and for the past few weeks, it's been something that I've had to face, even now while writing the script. But then, and admit Admittedly, as because it was out of obligation, I went to a theater to see the re-release of Kiki's Delivery Service, and I'm so, so happy that I did, because the film gave me exactly what I needed, and it's not entertainment or escapism or even nostalgia, it was inspiration. You see, Kiki's Delivery Service has always been a comfort movie for me, and for the past hundred other times I've seen it, it was comforting for the obvious reasons. It's beautifully animated, it's got great music, the characters are very sweet and charming, and overall it's just a real vibe. These are the reasons for why I first got attached the film, and they still are, but it was during this particular rewatch that I felt a different kind of comfort, the type that didn't just make me feel better, but inspired me to be better, to be more hopeful. For a G-rated film for kids, this is one of the most mature films I've seen, and it's because of not only what this movie is saying to its audience, but how it's presenting these themes to its audience. As I mentioned before, Kiki's Delivery Service is, in the most general sense possible, about how one gets lost in life after no longer finding that spark with the passion they once had, and I think this film perfectly captures the honeymoon phase of making our passion our career, the devastating and unexpected blowback that erupts after your passion feels less like something you want to do and more just a job you have to do, how to cope with the depression and anxiety one feels once this happens, and ultimately how to bounce back. On paper, these are very mature and adult themes that you'd expect in like some indie A24 arthouse film, but the fact that Miyazaki was able to communicate these themes through a children's story about a young witch made these themes not only so much more understandable, but presentable in a way that almost anyone, regardless of who or how old they are, can connect to. I think the best kinds of movies are the ones that anyone can get something out of, and the fact that everyone can immediately connect with Kiki proves that she's not only a compelling character, but an inspiring one as well. Because at some point in our lives, we all go through what Kiki goes through. All Kiki has ever dreamed about was becoming a witch, which is why despite being so young, she immediately leaves her home to pursue her passion. This is something that she's dreamed about all her life, and it's implied that up until that moment, she's had this optimistic, almost naive outlook 
on what her life might look like, and yet as the film goes on, she realizes that her path isn't as rose-tinted or straightforward as she thought. Despite meeting lots of kind and heartwarming people who value and appreciate the work she's done, she also encounters people who aren't as grateful. And on top of that, because she dedicates so much of her time and energy to her witch delivery business that she doesn't have time for things like going to parties or hanging out with her friend Tombo. And the times that she can spend time with Tombo, as enjoyable as they are, ultimately become fleeting because she feels completely inadequate. Her work has become so time-consuming that it's completely sucked the joy out of not just what was once her passion, but out of every other part of her life. She can't bring herself to meet Tombo's friends because of her insecurities and feelings of inadequacy. She's no longer able to understand her cat Gigi, and worst of all, she's no longer able to fly. That is devastating to Kiki. It's like she lost a part of herself, her purpose in life. As she says in the film, if I lose my magic, that means I've lost everything. It all seems hopeless. That is until she reunites with Ursula, a character that she first encounters in the woods while trying to deliver a toy black cat to a customer. And this is where we return to that scene I showed you in the beginning. Ursula tells her that as terrible and devastating as it may be, Kiki losing her witch powers isn't the end of the world. If you really love something, if you really care about whatever it is you consider to be your purpose or passion, then there's nothing to fret about if you become exhausted or lose that spark. As Ursula tells Kiki, she'll eventually get it back. She just needs to take a step back and just do something else, whether it's taking a walk or listening to music or hanging with friends, basically anything except flying. Ursula explains that if you stop doing what you've been doing your whole life and just take a minute to just be with yourself, eventually you'll yearn for your passion back. Eventually you'll have that jolt, that spark that motivates you to return and finish what you started. It's definitely not going to be easy, and it will take a while to get that mojo back. As Ursula beautifully says in the film, we need to find our own inspiration, Kiki. Sometimes it's not easy, but eventually it will come back. That's a guarantee. You will find that inspiration that not only rejuvenates your love for whatever passion or dream you had, but you come back as a better person with a newfound perspective. And that inspiration will come from the unlikeliest of places. And in the case of Kiki, that inspiration just happened to come from saving Tombo from the fucking falling Zeppelin. While obviously our inspirations hopefully won't come from anything as extreme as that, the point that both the film and I are trying to say is that if you're feeling down and no longer enjoying the thing you once loved, Give it some time. Your inspirations will come, and they'll come at the least likely of places. Maybe it'll be when you're eating dinner, or playing video games, or in my instance, watching an anime film you've seen a hundred times. Kiki regains her love and passion for being a witch by just taking a step back and giving her some time to herself. Just as Ursula regained her love and passion for painting a long time ago from doing the same thing. And that same love and passion you once had will come back for you too. You just have to wait. You just have to find your inspiration. And once you find it, it'll kick into overdrive. Because if it can happen to a 13-year-old anime witch girl, it can happen to you.